All right, so it's time to put together an AR-15 and lots of different ways to do that. Lots of different rifles you can buy. Uh, for this particular one, uh, the criteria was a rifle that uh, really is going to be as a t used as a test bed a lot for different accessories and parts and things that we might be testing for the channels and for the website. And uh, so I wanted to build something 16 inches or longer so I didn't have to worry about any NFA issues. I wanted to build something that didn't have too many proprietary parts like uh, gas systems or uh, crazy stocks or anything weird that uh, wouldn't allow lend itself to work with a lot of different parts. And then I had my own priorities. Uh, if it's going to be my rifle, I want to uh, have a uh, ability to run bayonets on it. So that for the 16-inch rifle, that limited me to the mid-length uh, uh, gas system which was fine with me. Uh, I also wanted to be able to shoot the thing comfortably and for me that means mid-length or longer. Uh, so I wasn't looking for a carbine on this one and since it's not NFA I uh, wanted to go with 16 inches instead of 20 inches. So that's pretty much the criteria on it and now let's take a look at um, how it goes together and uh, the parts. So lots of different parts for AR-15s are very modular and uh, you can get a lot of different options. There's always room to upgrade. There's always room, you know, for new things to be invented and new things to be bolted on or replaced. So I chose to go with uh, the uh, concept of buying a good barrel and then working the rest of the rifle around the barrel. And for me, I went with a BCM Bravo Company machine uh, barrel. This one's a 16 inch barrel with uh, the mid length gas system and the lightweight profile, meaning it's a thin barrel to reduce weight because being 16 inches it's going to be heavier than some of the 10 inch or uh, short barrels that I, I'm used to. So uh, starting with the barrel, this one happened to came, come with an upper, uh, the gas and everything right away. So that means I'm going to need a lower receiver. This is the registered part and for this build I'm going to use a stag arms. No real reason, just the one that uh, had laying around to be built and it's a good one it'll do everything I need it to do. Um, from the lower receiver gonna need the parts kit for the inside, a pistol grip, the uh, receiver uh, extension, the buffer tube, uh, the springs, the buffer, the uh, bolt carrier which doesn't come with the upper in this case you can get them that way sometimes um, and then just the hand guards and a couple other small parts and that'll be the basic gun put together. So I guess let's take a look at them here. Get a fake issue of Swap Magazine and another ad, some chick on it. My invoice. Now this particular upper costs about 500 bucks. So it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't the most expensive either. Looks like we got a hat, BCM hat, which is already taken. Somebody asked for it. Get the box. You get a Bravo Company catalog. And a couple of stickers. And a thing that says you should join the NRA. And it's in bubble wrap and it's all smells good like it just came out of a factory. It's just got the regular muzzle brake on it. Low profile barrel so it's skinny all the way down nice and lightweight or at least as lightweight as you can get a 16 inch barrel for the most part. Got a typical sight post up front and uh, the front cup or whatever that's called for the uh, hand guards. It's got the mid-length gas tube right away. Simple delta ring. So I could use a set of inexpensive standard hand guards like this with some heat shields and go with that option. These are just for looks though. I'm going to go with a Magpul hand guard. Uh, then we've got the delta ring. It's all headspace and everything. We've got its upper and 
no bolt carrier. So everything that you need minus the bolt carrier for the upper. And that was 500 bucks. This is a uh, cold hammer forged barrel, one and seven twist, if I remember correctly. Uh, the finish is designed to hold the oil so that it doesn't rust. Uh, it's designed to give it a uniform texture. It's definitely military spec. And then uh, we've got some things going on in here, like uh, the M4 cuts, which allow feeding with the uh, short, shorter gas system. And that can be useful for sure. And most importantly for my applications, the uh, setup is correct for the bayonet. New Marine bayonet. All right, so as we're filming this, we've got the uh, blog TV going live down there, so we're answering some questions and getting some feedback from the chat. So we've got our upper, which again was, you know, bought this on the internet from BCM directly, uh, 500 bucks or so. Got the lower receiver. I'm gonna need a couple of things for the inside of the upper there. So I've got an LMT bolt with a uh, uh, bolt carrier. And this is what 150 bucks or something. Got a mil spec uh, receiver extension, LMT, and a uh, buffer. I forget what those are. Uh, then we've got the internal parts kit. So this is a Rock River parts kit. It's all the springs and hammer and trigger and stuff. And then it comes with that stupid pistol grip for some reason. I went with the uh, Mo stock so this is the cheaper of the two Magpul stocks but still it's like I don't know 40 bucks or 50 bucks I went with again with some a Mo front end so this is the mid length uh, hand guard and I think these are like 40 bucks of course I'm drinking the Kool-Aid so I got an AFG just because it's what the heck I could always put it on an AK if I don't like it and that's like 35 bucks Uh, the parts kit comes with a uh, trigger guard, but trigger guards are kind of lame because they don't allow like a lot of room for a glove. And out here in Arizona, you know, we always wear gloves, so um, got a magpul trigger guard, and that just means it's plastic and it scoops down. But I think they're like eleven bucks or something. I went with a little Noveski QD thing to put on the magpul for the front part of the sling. And a Noveski uh, receiver end plate with a quick detach for the sling on the front, and then a, a, a VTAC multicam sling. Oh, sorry, this is like 35 bucks or something, and I forget what that is 20 bucks maybe. This is a uh, $45 sling, maybe $40. I don't know. Need a castle nut. I don't know what those are. Five or ten bucks. Now I think I've screwed myself by only buying one of these, but I'm gonna need two of these Blue Force uh, gear QD sling things, and these are made in US. A lot of these are made in China, so I pay a couple of bucks more. Are they 16 bucks? So there should be two of those. That should be like 30 bucks. And then for some reason I bought the Magpul Illumination Kit, which I don't think I'm going to need. So this might go back to the store for like, you know, credit or something. But I haven't decided how I'm going to put on my light yet. Uh, LMT charging handle, 50 bucks. And then a Magpul M-Bus rear sight, uh, I forget, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. I have to get a Surefire mag because that's the only thing cool enough to run in this AR. So 160 bucks or something crazy. And then even though it's an M16 AR15 and it should run with a uh, M9, I had to go with the new Marine bayonet. So 130 bucks for the uh, what is this thing called? The uh, OKC 3S. So those are what I consider the necessary parts. The only thing I'm really lacking is a light. 
and oh sorry, I guess made me need this spring. And somebody gave me this spring, so I forget how much they actually cost. So that's what the parts look like before you put them together, and then we'll start putting them together here. And then I'm going with this handguard because it's awesome. I'm not trying to teach people how to put this together. Um, what I'll do is I'll just sort of start assembling and turn the camera on, uh, read comments and questions as they come into the live blog there, and we'll get some interactivity going. But basically this is the assortment of stuff I bought for my AR so that I didn't buy extra, a lot of extra stuff. You know, I could have bought a Colt, you know, whatever model. Actually, I don't think Colt makes a mid-length 16-inch, so I probably couldn't have bought a Colt, but I could have bought, you know, whatever, fill-in-the-blank name, and uh, then not liked the handguards and removed them. Uh, not, I'm already not going to like the muzzle brake here, you know, so I'll be removing that. I'm paying for a part I don't need. Um, you know, if I would have bought something with a handle and I didn't want the handle or vice versa, uh, a lot of times you end up buying a gun with a stock. So by buying just the tube, you know, starting from scratch, I don't have an extra stock laying around. And sure, it's only 20 bucks probably for that extra stock, but you know, why have a pile of $20 parts you don't need? At this point, it looks like the <clears throat> pistol grip I won't use, the, uh, the trigger guard I won't use and the muzzle brake I'll eventually swap out but other than that I didn't buy anything extra that I don't need for this particular rifle and then when I'm done I'll have pretty much the rifle I want so uh, I'm gonna pause this video and see what's going on in chat The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.